Welcome to the third video in this course and we are going to be looking at the tab down here that says final scores and we're looking at how you might be able to quickly and easily come up with the results of your race for a dual meet cross country event. Just to remind you what we've done so far, um, if maybe you're watching these videos out of order which would be fine, uh, here this tab right here, this sheet is the roster where you're going to put the names of the competitors, the athletes here. You're going to put your school name or your group name, your team name. Team name. Uh, here in column D, you're going to have the race, maybe it's the distance or a special name of the event or whatever you want to put there. And then we have gender, male or female. And remember this first column here was not changed, you have to keep that in that order, uh, ascending order the bib numbers are assigned to the runners in that manner. And then we came over here to the two results page. I labeled them as varsity results and JV results, results. And this is where the timing happens. And if you remember, you entered any character in here into the blue and pink cells in order to get a timestamp just like that. And when you do that, all of these runners results are instantaneously uh, calculated for you as they come across the line you are simply going to enter a character or if you have enough time and you can anticipate them coming across the line you're simply going to enter uh, the bib number as you see that see it on their on their jersey on their shirt but I just enter a character just like that and then somebody else is going to keep the runners in order as they come across a line, uh, maybe funnel them into like a shoot and then they go to the table, they report what's your number and then just put them in order in, in the order in which they finish and tell me what the numbers are in the order. So then I go back and enter the numbers later and I have instantaneous results as I need them. 45 is not a bib number that I obviously entered on my roster so I made a mistake there. And there you get your instantaneous results and you can order those and rearrange those and group those however you want to using the uh, headers here at the top of the spreadsheet. So that's the varsity results and JV results. Now let's come to um, really uh, one of the other very powerful components of the spreadsheet. Uh, hopefully you're seeing how, how easy this is. All of the formulas that are in the spreadsheet are doing all the work for you. You are just simply adding simple uh, data entries. It's fast, it's quick, it's easy, uh, and it's very, very powerful because it's doing so much work for you and you don't have to labor over all of these calculations and trying to organize all the data. So this final tab here is looking at the final scores. Again, this is specifically used for a dual meet cross country event, meaning that you may have 10 schools or 10 different teams there, but you want to see how team one did against team two, how team three did against team two, how team four did against team one. So I'm going to come back here and uh, we're going to have the results page here. And we're going to have some numbers entered back here in this column where we have the bib number or the, the runner numbers. And then we're going to compare the different schools or the different groups that have been um, at our meet. We're just going to compare uh, one group against another group, one team against another team. Okay? Okay, so what I've done here is I've gone ahead and I've just run kind of a sample race. It's real simple. It's kind of simulating how it works here. Uh, I've already had my timestamp up here for the varsity boys and the varsity girls and then uh, as they're coming across or um, somehow I'm getting their bib number whether I put that bib number in as soon as they cross the finish line or I enter in some other um, character on a keyboard and then get the bib numbers later from somebody else that's keeping track of that. So I just have some uh, numbers here as, as if they, I just ran a race and I got all the numbers in there for all the competitors and I'm only showing just two groups, group one and group two. Um, and I want to show you now this last tab 
the uh, last sheet here called final scores. Um, now I could also have the results for my JV, re my JV race, uh, my other race. So I have a timestamp here. I could also punch in numbers here uh, for any JV runner that comes across and have results for them as well. But I'm just going to show the varsity. Okay. So now your race is done and you want to start to compare team one against team two, group one against group two. And I only have two groups here. You can have as many as you want, as long as uh, you know you don't exhaust the number of rows here. And what I'm going to do is I just type in. I've already done it here, but I'm going <clears> to <throat> delete this so you see how easy it is. So here in the two yellow boxes, again, don't touch any other cells. Only enter the names of your teams exactly as they are on your roster into the two yellow boxes. So here, Team A, I've called them Group 1. And as soon as I enter Group 1 and I hit Return, it's going to, as you see right here, come up with their scores. I'm going to compare that to Group 2. And again, immediately it's going to come up with the scores for Group 2. Now, it's not showing JV because I don't have results for the JV races for the JV girls and down here for the JV boys. So those are blank. But if you did have results for the JV, this sheet right here, the JV results, if you had that, then you would see values here for your JV girls and JV boys. All it's going to do, the way that the uh, cross-country event is scored, it is low score wins. So you'll see here that uh, group one, this is the group one results right here, their top seven runners it's, it's scored by taking the top seven runners, but then only scoring, you have seven runners, but only scoring the top five. So your top five scores there. And the score is simply whatever place they finished in. So the first place runner gets a score of one. The second place runner gets a score of two. I know this is oversimplified because I just kept it really basic. So this group one or team one, they got a total score of 15. It's the sum of the score, the placement of the first five runners for that team. Group two or team two, all of their runners came in different, uh, different places here, okay? So you'll notice here that this runner here scores and eight, but they came in 11th place. Why did that happen? That's because the other team has seven runners, and those seven runners, even though the top five are scored, those seven runners can push the score of the other team uh, higher. So you notice that runner six here and runner seven of the other team came in before uh, this particular uh, runner. So he gets a score of eight. And this person gets a score of nine. So even though these last two scores are not counted for group one or team one, they end up affecting the score of the other team. So you take the top five scores here, add them up, even though you have seven runners. Those seven runners are called pushers and they can push the other runners in the other team kind of to a higher score, a, a, a further back. And uh, that helps your team. So you just add these numbers up, they get a score of 50, and it'll tell you the winner down here is group one. This is for the varsity boys. Same results, because I just typed them in very similarly. And you have, here are the boy results here, top five, score 15. Here's the top five for the other team, score 50, winners group one. And you can have all that same information over here for the JV if you were to have the JV results filled in. Quick and easy, fast, dependable. Uh, it saves you so much time. And uh, as a result, uh, you can get some instantaneous results to uh, all the teams that you invited to your race. Now you could, if you wanted to, you could take this tab right here and you could copy that and have multiple tabs just like that have multiple sheets that are called final score, final score one, two, three, four, and you could have group one versus group two, group 
one versus group three, group one versus group four, and so on and so on and so on, and match up uh, all the possible pairings in your in your dual meet. Okay, so fast, easy, efficient, powerful, and uh, very very helpful. So I hope you are going to benefit tremendously from using this uh, scoring and timing spreadsheet. I hope it is something that you uh, can use frequently and that it saves you lots of time. It gives you efficient results and uh, makes your organizing of the race uh, much, much easier. Uh, there is a bonus uh, video. So if you uh, are going to watch the Next video in this course, uh, I just show you a spreadsheet that I'm throwing in as a bonus. Uh, that is, uh, I altered the spreadsheet just a little bit in order to accommodate an altered, or sorry, staggered start, which means basically you've got everybody in a race, but they're not all starting at the same time. And we did this for an aquathon or aqua marathon where they're swimming and running. So I hope you're gaining a lot from it. And uh, if you're gonna watch the fourth video, uh, how I altered this uh, spreadsheet. I'll see you there. Thanks so much.